Hello my friends and welcome. I made this amplifier a few years ago and it works fine, but it has a noisy cooling fan. This is annoying, especially late at night when I'm working quietly on my PC. The noisy fan is right in front of me. To improve the amplifier and make it less annoying, I want to change the fan speed depending on the heatsink temperature. So I bought some ceramic thermal switches and in this episode I will show you a simple way to control the fan speed. I've already tested metallic thermal switches in an older video, you can watch it here. But these have a problem, if you tighten them too hard they can create a short between the metallic case and the contacts inside, that's pretty dangerous. Now I will test another type of thermal switches, they have a ceramic case so no more short circuits. They also have a small hole so you can easily install them with a screw. These bimetal switches are very simple to use. For example, this is a 40 degrees Celsius normally open thermal switch. It's connected between the battery and the light bulb. I will use my small heat gun to heat up the switch. Normally open means that this is an open circuit, but when the switch gets to 40 degrees, it closes the circuit, similar to a relay, and the bulb lights up. So it would be the same thing if I use a fan instead of the light bulb. I will add a digital thermometer so we can measure the temperature when testing the switch. And I will cover the switch and the thermometer probe with aluminum foil, so they will both have the same temperature. I will use the same heat gun. You can see the temperature rising. When the thermal switch and the thermometer probe get to 40 degrees Celsius, the switch turns on the fan. Now the fan is cooling the thermal switch, the temperature is decreasing. The reset temperature is 30 degrees, so 10 degrees lower, and the switch turns off the fan. But what if I want the fan speed to increase gradually? For example, the cooling fan on my PC video card starts when the temperature of the chipset reaches 45 degrees Celsius. Then, if the temperature rises, so does the fan speed. I want to build something similar but in 3 steps, at 40, 50 and 60 degrees, so I will use these 3 thermal switches. The fan will be powered with this 12 volts adapter. To decrease the fan speed I made this diode necklace. These diodes have a forward voltage drop of around 1 volt, with a load connected. So after each diode connected in series, the fan voltage will get lower and lower. I made this simple circuit, at 40 degrees Celsius the first switch will turn on the fan, but with only 5 volts because all the diodes are connected in series with the fan. If the temperature rises to 50 degrees, then the second switch will short some of the diodes, now the fan will receive 8 volts. And at 60 degrees the third switch will short the remaining diodes, so the fan will be powered with 12 volts. The fan speed will increase depending on the heatsink temperature. To simulate a chipset or a heatsink, I will use this heating element, made of 4 ceramic resistors. The switches and the thermometer probe will be mounted between the ceramic resistors. And I will cover and tighten this contraption with kept on tape, for a better temperature reading. The switches are not entirely covered by the hot resistors, but for a simple test it will be fine. Instead of the fan, I will use a 12V light bulb, for a better visualization of the test. Let's recap, the ceramic resistor represents the heatsink or IC that you want to cool down, it will be powered by my DIY variable power supply. The thermometer shows the temperature of the IC, the light bulb represents the cooling fan, and the voltmeter shows the voltage that powers the fan depending on the temperature. Shows the voltage that powers the fan depending on the temperature. Let's start the test. Let's start the test. The ceramic resistors will be powered with 9 volts. The temperature is starting to increase slowly. I will fast forward the video. At 40 degrees, the first switch turns on, as expected, and the fan or light bulb is powered with around 5 volts and barely lights up. In a minute the temperature reaches 50 degrees and the second switch clicks. Now the fan voltage is 8 volts. 
and at 60 degrees the third switch turns up the fan voltage to 12 volts. Unlike my previous video, this test is a complete success, the fan speed increases in steps depending on the heatsink temperature. And if we let the resistor to cool down, the fan voltage will also gradually decrease. If you want to go crazy, you can use 5 thermal switches for even better control over the fan speed, but I think 5 switches will be overkill. Now let's get back to my old amplifier. When I turn it on, you can hear the fan speed, even though the heatsink is cold. And if I turn up the audio volume and the TDA ICs heat up, I must manually push the switch to increase the fan speed. This madness has to change. Please excuse the old design. If you want to see how I built it, you can watch this video. For the first speed, the fan is powered with 5.7 volts. I want to increase it to 6 volts. And the maximum voltage is 9.5 volts. I will set it to 10 volts. Let's get to work. First I will remove the fan switch. The 16 years old white tape turned yellow and brown. The tone corrector and fan are powered from the same transformer output with 12 volts. There are some final diodes in series with the fan to reduce the maximum speed. The heatsink is mounted with 3 screws. I will unscrew them from under the amplifier box. I don't want to desolder all the wires because it will take a lot of time. The thermal switches will be mounted under the heatsink so they will not be influenced by the cooling air. I need one more hole, so I will drill it with a 3.2mm drill bit. Careful with the fingers. This screw will be removed, so I can use the hole for the switch. I will use this chamfering bit to make the hole smoother. And the surface will be cleaned with fine sandpaper. There are some metal shavings inside the case, I will go outside to clean it. Everything is clean now, I can continue with the thermal switches. I will use only two switches for this project, with 40 and 55 degrees. I already soldered some wires, I just need to insulate them with heat shrink tubes. The thermal switches will be mounted with 3mm screws around here. I will add some thermal paste between the switch and heatsink for a better temperature transfer. And this 1mm thick foam tape will push the switches onto the heatsink even better. The switches are almost as tall as the heatsink standoffs, so it's fine. The thermal switches are mounted. Now I can put the heatsink back in its position. The old diodes and wires must be removed from the fan switch. These are the wires I have to work with. Positive 12 volts from the transformer, 3 wires from the thermal switches, and the positive fan wire. I will use the same diodes as before, but I will remove one. Almost 6 volts for the first stage, that's good. And for the second stage, one diode and almost 10 volts. This is the schematic. Wow, behold the innovation. The space is pretty crowded behind the rocker switch, so I need to be careful with all the solder joints. I soldered the wires, let's test it. I will heat up the heatsink. At 40 degrees, the fan turns on with 6 volts. And a minute later, at 55 degrees, the fan voltage goes up to 10 volts. The fan rocker switch can also be used to manually power the fan directly with 10 volts. I want to thank all my patrons for their support. If you want to see these videos a few days earlier and more DIY videos, Please check out my Patreon page. The wiring is finished, I can insulate the joints now, and I soldered two more wires for the green LEDs. I want to turn on the left LED for the first fan stage and the right LED for the second stage. So I made this simple schematic for the LEDs. To make the right LED turn on only at 10 volts, not on 6 volts, I added a few more diodes in series. With all the fan diodes and LED diodes in series, the voltage reaching the LED will be too low to turn it on. But after the 55 degrees thermal switch will short the fan diodes, the LED voltage will increase enough to light it up. 
The diodes and resistor will be insulated and I need to find a place to hide them. There we go. The upgrade is finished. These are the last three screws. Before closing the amplifier case, let's do a final test. I will heat up the amplifier heatsink. Let's monitor the cooling fan, the fan voltage and the green LEDs. 40 degrees, the fan turns on with 6 volts and the left LED lights up. 55 degrees, 10 volts for the fan and the right LED is lit. Everything works as it should, I can close the amplifier case now. The top cover is held in position only with magnets. The heatsink is cooling down, after a minute the LED on the right turns off and the fan becomes quieter. And if we wait another minute the fan stops completely. Now I can work in silence at my desk, for example when I recorded this script. Even if I listen to some music at low volume, it will take some time for the fan to turn on. This was a small and simple upgrade, but it's pretty useful. It will prolong the lifespan of the cooling fan. And if you want to cool down the heatsink in a portable speaker or any portable device, it will use less energy from the battery. So thanks for watching this episode. If you enjoyed it, please share it, leave a comment below and I'll see you soon. Bye! The switches are not entirely covered by the hot resistors, but for a simple test it will be fun. Instead of the fan, I will use a 12 volt light bulb for a better visualization of the test. So let's, recap. let's recap. The ceramic resistor represents the heatsink or IC that you want to 